Even before the crisis hit, Mohamed El Arian, CEO and co-CIO of PIMCO, was warning that the U.S. was on an unsustainable course. His book, When Markets Collide, suggested the center of gravity in the world economy was shifting away from the U.S. to the developing countries of China and India. Joining me now is Mr. El Arian to talk about this and other factors going on in the world economy today. Thank you for joining us, Mr. El Arian. Thank you, Eric, for having me on. Global trade has been choked off. Global financing has been uh, cut off and um, especially hard hit are the big exporting nations in the developing world. Are you still as positive as you used to be on the emerging economies? I am long term, Eric. Um, the first point you've made, which is important, is that the world suffered a massive cardiac arrest on September 15th. It's what economists call sudden stop. Everything stopped um, when Lehman failed. And the result of that is that trade financing stopped overnight. Because of that, everybody was locked down in the global economy. So nobody stayed on their feet. Everybody was down. So the question is not today whether you're down. The question is how quickly can you get up? And if you ask that question, how quickly can you get up, it leads you to what conditions you need to be able to get up in a sustainable manner. You need to be a net saver. You need to be a net creditor. And many emerging economies meet that criteria. So looking forward, one would expect the emerging economies, not all of them, but the stronger ones, the Chinas of the world, the Brazils of the world, to recover first and to recover in a most sustainable fashion. What worries you the most? I think what worries me the most is that the system is not going to be able to reset at anything that looks like um, high employment and low inflation. I worry that we may end up, and I say may, because it's a low probability, but you have to worry about that. We may end up in a multi-year process of low growth and high inflation. You say that's a low probability. What's a higher probability? I think the higher probability is that we start recovering on the growth side. Global growth goes back to 4% by 2011. The U.S. slowly rehabilitates itself, and inflation is contained. Looking back five years from now, what will we say nobody anticipated, what were the biggest surprises, and how will the world have changed? It's a tough question, um, and it really ultimately relates to the United States. The baseline scenario that most of us have is that the United States remains important, remains an engine of growth, but is no longer the engine of growth in the global economy. That, as you said in your introduction, you get a shift in gravity to the developing world, and we go from one big global plane that was powered by the U.S. as the global engine of growth to multiple smaller engines that include the U.S. in developing countries. That, that is the baseline scenario. The surprises would be if the U.S. turns out in one of the two corner solutions, as economists call it. One corner solution is what happened to Japan in 1989, that basically Japan checked out of global growth for 10 years and nobody noticed. So one very big surprise would be that the U.S. is not able to get its act together, but despite that, the global economy continues to grow. The other big surprise is that the other side of the distribution of surprises, if you like, is that if the United States doesn't face an L or a W, but in fact faces a V, and we find out that towards the second half of this year, the U.S. is back at 3%. That would be a game changer for markets and for the global economy. I think the, the chances of both probabilities are low, but they would constitute major surprises to the baseline that is now priced into markets. Okay, that's interesting. And, and those letters you were talking about referring to the shape of the recovery. Correct. Thanks for joining us, Mohammed. That was very interesting. Thank you, Eric. I'm Eric Schorenberg from MoneyWatch.com. Thanks for watching.